Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is COVID-19 hospitalization costs for employers. Now, I have not talked a lot about the COVID-19 pandemic on A Healthcare Z, but I think this is a particularly important topic as we are in rene renewal season this year. So how much has COVID hospitalizations been affecting the financial performance of employee health plans? Let's answer that question. So, all these numbers are from the CDC and a couple of other um, high quality sources. I will leave a link in the show notes to those sources so that you can look them up yourself. So, for the week of September 15th through the 21st of 2021, there were a total of 9,636 hospitalizations for COVID across the entire country for all age groups. So, if you annualize that out, that's 501,000. Now, of course, if, as I look back, there are some weeks that have a lot more than 9,600 hospitalizations. There are some weeks that have a lot less than 9,600 hospitalizations. But at the end of the day, 9,600 hospitalizations, if you look at it, it's kind of in the middle. So it's like a reasonable number for the week, and then extrapolate it, multiply it by 52, to get 501,000 annual COVID hospitalizations. Okay, but that's for all ages. So. 60% of those hospitalizations were for 18 to 64 year olds. In other words, working age people. So you take the 0.6 times the 501,000 and that gives you 300,000 people of working age that were hospitalized with COVID, that on an annualized basis would be hospitalized with COVID. But not everybody of working age works. So about 70 or, I shouldn't say that, not everyone of working age has employer-sponsored health insurance. There's part-timers that work that don't get employer-sponsored health insurance. There's folks that are unemployed that might get uh, Medicaid. There's people that are uninsured. So anyway, what, what percentage of people in that age group are on employer-sponsored health plans? Well, the answer to that is 70% of 18 to 64-year-olds are on employer-sponsored health insurance. So you take the 300,000 people, multiply it by 0.7, that gives you 210,000 people of working age who are on employer-sponsored health insurance who would be uh, it hospitalized due to COVID on an annualized basis. Now, we need to know what that is in terms of an actual number. And the way to do that is, is there are a hundred, is to say, okay, well not 70%, but what's the actual number of people in America that are on employer-sponsored health plans between the ages of 18 and 64? Well, it's 139 million. Okay, so fine. So you take the 210,000 hospitalizations for people in that age group, you divide it by the 139 million people in that age group that are on employer-sponsored health plans, and you get 210,000 divided by the 139 million, you get an annualized COVID hospitalization rate of 0.15%. So what that means in terms of round numbers is is that there will be three COVID hospitalizations for every 2,000 lives on an employer-sponsored health plan for people between the ages of 18 and 64. Okay, so there's, you know, you know, obviously the number of member lives is the ratio is typically two lives for every one employee, but oftentimes those folks are kids, they're under the age of 18. So really, and a lot of times, you know, the, both, the, both the parents work, so they're both on their own individual employer sponsored health funds. So really, I'm gonna say that 2,000 is per 2,000 employees, okay? So you're gonna have three, con three COVID hospitalizations for every 2,000 employee lives on your plan. Okay, so then the question becomes, oh, how much does a COVID hospitalization cost? Well, believe it or not, Fair Health actually looked at that, and for private commercial insurance, okay, so not Medicare, Medicaid, for private commercial insurance, the average COVID, uh, COVID uh, hospitalization was $20,292. Now, you're going to have very, you know, short hospitalizations. You're going to have ICU stays that are, so it's going to be a range, right? But as we're saying, on average, it's about $20,000 per hospitalization. So in other words, the $20,292 times the three hospitalizations, so you're talking about $61,000 uh, in annual COVID hospitalization costs for every 2,000 employee lives. Well, shoot, the average annual health care cost for an employee is $10,000 per employee per year, or a million dollars for every 100 employees. So the total health care spend 
for a 2,000 employee company with 2,000 employees on the health plan is $20 million, which means that only 61,000 out of the $20 million was actually coming from COVID hospitalization. What's that called? Not a lot, hardly anything. So if you want to break it down for smaller employers, so in other words, that's on average $3,050 per every 100 employee lives per year. Again, that company spent a million dollars a year on employee health insurance premiums, and COVID's only cost them $3,000 a year. So what does that mean? Look, we're in renewal season. Are COVID hospitalizations driving claims up and therefore the source of high renewals? The answer is no. If you're a self-funded employer, like COVID hospitalizations are not a major source of healthcare costs on your plan. And if you're a fully insured employer, like your renewal, if it's high, is not because of COVID hospitalizations. And that makes intuitive sense as well, right? So how is it that we can have all these COVID hospitalizations and hospital in, hospitals in America being packed, and yet it's not a major impact on employer-sponsored health plans. 60% of these hospitalizations are for, for people between the ages of 18 and 64. This is like working age people. Why, why? $20,000 is not that much. Remember, the three largest drivers for uh, health insurance plans, for commercial health insurance plans, are cancer, cardiovascular, and musculoskeletal. And especially those cancer and those musculoskeletal um, claims costs have been down a lot with people not getting their elective you know, surgeries, et cetera, et cetera. And then people getting, let's say they get their chemo, they probably are getting it done on an outpatient basis instead of coming into the hospital because they don't want to be around the hospital because they're immunocompromised. So it's a lower cost setting. So the hospitals are having lower reimbursement per hospitalization. Right? Those spine surgeries were 100,000, 200,000, quarter of a million dollars. And they're trading in those quarter of a million dollar spine surgeries for $20,000 COVID stays. And so this is how employers will not have very intense costs from COVID. And yet hospitals can be packed and losing money because a COVID stay that's like a, that's a, that's referred to as a, as a general medical floor stay like some of these people go to the ICU but the reimbursement on a general medical floor stay is not much so that's how you can have massively full hospitals and yet not have it dramatically impact the health plan costs for employers in America now a few extra uh, interesting extra statistics so the hospitalization rate for if you split up the working age population, the hospitalization rate for the 18 to 49 year olds is about the same as the hospitalization rate for the 50 to 64 year olds. And part of that has to, not all of that, but part of that has to do with the fact that, look, the 18 to 49 year olds have a lower fully vaccinated rate. Their full vaccination rate is only 56%, whereas the 50 to 64 year olds, their full vaccination rate is 73%. So we know one of the major risk factors for COVID hospitalization is older age. So you would think that the older folks would have higher degrees of, of hospitalizations, but they really don't because the higher age is kind of counterbalanced by the fact that they have higher vaccina uh, vaccination rates. Okay, what else? Okay, then the question becomes, okay, does it vary by state as well? So let's look at the vaccination rates for 18 to 64 year olds by state. So Alabama's at the low end at 44%, Connecticut's at the high end of 76%, but in, as, in terms of states that have just a ton of employees, just have very large employed populations, California's at 68%, Texas is at 60%, New York's at 71%, and Illinois is at 59%. Yeah, so they're kind of different, but it's not like hugely different. So if you're an employer that has employees in various states, like, you know, I don't think it's a huge difference by state where your employees are, are located in terms of like what your COVID hospitalization costs are gonna be. I mean, that's not that dramatically different by state. Yes, it's somewhat different, but it's not hugely different. Okay, so the punchline is COVID hospitalizations are not a major source of cost for employers. They should not be a major impact on renewals. And that's my point for today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.